All right, good afternoon. This is Thomas David House of Deegan. Um, before I begin, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, hereby affirm that the following testimony is true, accurate, complete, the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, to the best of my knowledge and ability. So help me God. I'm going to start off with going into the complaint that we did, and the complaint that we did was about 24 pages, and we simply used the majority of it as their words, their codes, their case law, and uh, we have turned it around on them as they have done on us. It is applicable to them. It is not applicable to us. Uh, their oath of office is an employment contract for us. They work for us. And that is what we're seeking to enforce at this point in time, is this employment contract. And once they've taken one penny from the Treasury, once they have uh, subscribed their oath and filed it, um, at that point, they are our employee. And they do need to act as such. Now, we asked for mandamuses simply to return West Virginia to a constitutional form of government. Um, we want these corporations shut down. We want the assets liquidated and returned to the real men with hands and legs. And we want the right honored that we have from our creator to expatriate. Uh, we haven't asked for any monetary damages. Uh, it's not about money. We simply want the government returned to the original framers intent that is it and so I'm going to go into the 1868 expatriation Ooh. act okay. and mm. simply just need the first line from it and this was uh, July 27th 1868 whereas the right of expatriation is a natural and inherent right of all people so there it says it all well, you have the right to expatriate um, they do not wish to honor it nowadays. Um, I have expatriated. I have uh, expatriated from the entire corporate structure of Earth. And I'd do it again. We are seeking that they set up a department or an agency that will accept the notice from real men with hands and legs of their expatriation. And we are seeking uh, diplomatic immunity papers and diplomatic plates for the vehicles uh, so that we will not be molested in our everyday affairs. We do not think that this is too much to ask for, uh, especially considering that we probably will not get a return to constitutional government. The court came in with a scheduling order about 12 days after our filing and attempted to transform us magically into fictional entities and uh, they must do this because like things can only deal with like things and they are a creature of the mind, a fiction of law. And if you look at the document on hudoc.info, you will clearly see that the title, uh, they have capitalized our names. Now, that is a fiction. Anytime you see capitalization, that is a fiction of law. That is your Sescovy Trust. That is a war name. That is a corporation set up by... Washington DC Municipal Corporation and if you look at the body of the document you will clearly see that they then go back to referring to us in the in the normal capacities uh, to fool you and so when you go into court they will the title page is all that matters that's the entities they're talking to the rest of it is fraud uh, because if if on the title page it is all caps it should be all caps completely through the document and so every document you get from court is evidence of fraud being perpetrated against you. There were four different West Virginia entities named in this scheduling order. Four different ones. Um, and that's a problem at law. Uh, they were only authorized to operate uh, according to the United States Congress under one name, and that is State of, quotation marks, West Virginia. And that's exactly from the act, and you can see that on hudoc.info. Good day, everyone. 
This is Robert J. Morris for the Robert J. Morris channel here on YouTube. Um, what you've been listening to and watching there is none other than Thomas Deegan, uh, the gentleman who was at the center of the conference call that we covered last Friday night on our podcast, which we eventually got to cover. Um, anyway, um, just uh, before I go on and play more uh main points from the video uh it's about 49 minutes long i believe so there's a there's a lot of repetition in there so we don't have to necessarily watch the whole thing i highly recommend that everyone does i will supply links in the description below um so uh there's also a website here whodoc.info where you can get more information on the current status um this is uh happening at a very rapid pace i've been following this since i was alerted to that phone call and uh, a lot of uh, movements have been taking place already several petitions have already been filed in other states uh to and what i'll do is i'll explain he gives the uh basis by which uh these things hold validity so um i'm not going to play like, like i said before i'm not going to uh play the entire video what I'm going to do is uh, chop it up and play uh, some key uh, points and again I'll supply the link so you can go and check it out yourself and watch the whole thing on your time um, however I uh, will uh, continue uh, playing this and uh, well let's have a listen so when they're coming in as all cap state of West Virginia upper and lowercase state of West Virginia West Virginia uh, these are all more evidences of, of the fraud being perpetrated by them. They, they cannot uh, operate in capacities that is not contractually authorized, and the contract, of course, is the federal and state constitutions. Now, I'm not a believer in either of them because I know the fraud that existed to implement them, but if they're there and they're purporting they're there, then they need to be... No, Phil, that's mine. They, they need to be honoring those. Uh, there is no reason that they can't. They choose not to. Um, and so with the next document. Next document. Yeah, yes. you got it up? Okay. Next document, Barry. Okay, so what we're looking at is the lien, which is filed on July 28th, 2011. And it is the acknowledgement is going to the Department of Defense and the Department of Homeland Security in San Jose, California. And this document is prima facie evidence of trafficking in humans, men, women, and children. That is outlawed both in our country and internationally as slavery. Um, and they placed a total of $28.6 quadrillion dollar lien against our bodies and our property. Now, I'm sure this has been done before. Uh, this was a, a security, so they created $28.6 quadrillion dollars worth of zeros and ones on a computer screen. I'd like to know where it went. Um, our national debt is only $18.5 trillion, so we've got uh, 100 times that that they just created. Um, and if you look through it, you will see, quite simply, that the debtor was the Federal Reserve System. So at some point that's saying that the Federal Reserve System owned us. Otherwise they could not be the debtor in this situation. And it's given over to E Pluribus Unum, the United States of America, United States Department of the Treasury 1789. And notice these are all caps. Um, these are fictions, these are corporations. This is not the de jure government. You also have the U.S. Department of Defense Finance and Accounting Services and the North American Water and Power Alliance. Um, I'm not sure why North American Water and Power Alliance is in there as a private entity, but they have claimed ownership. And of course, in all of our papers, we refer to ourselves as real men with hands and legs, and that comes directly from this lien document. We didn't make it up. Uh, but if it's good enough to place a lien on us, it's obviously good enough to describe who we are. Now the second one was an agricultural lien. And we have uh, acknowledgement going to the U.S. Treasury and Internal Revenue Service along with the Controller of Maryland Enforcement Division in Maryland. 
And that was filed August 12, 2011. And this was based on Bank of America is involved in this as well. So they are a party, a co-conspirator, an aider and a better to this crime. And once again, the United States Department of the Treasury 1789 is the secured party. Now this is filed within their system. It's stamped. Uh, it's there. Um, it was it was paid for. Um, and they claim they own you, your children, your wives, your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren. And so far, no one's done anything about it. I'm not sure why. It's um, it's outrageous that they think they can own us and sell us, uh, because the Federal Reserve as the debtor did own us at one time, supposedly. Now this is an imaginary land, this is fiction, but they are the ones holding the guns. And so at some point, someone's gonna have to stand up and say stop, and so that's what we've done. Um, if you check the complaint, there is uh, six pages of judicial notice. It's all their code, case law, various documents and filings by them. It's not a single word from us. I think they just saw the light. Yeah, I think they did. <laughs> I think they did. <clears throat> My portion of the complaint in order to have standing here because I'm not a citizen of their corporate system was the fact that I was kidnapped three times now. Uh, all three times without a warrant. First time was no warrant at all. Second and third time were unlawful warrants, military warrants that were defective on their face. I was placed in solitary confinement for almost five months. Uh, over this issue and was coerced into signing a plea agreement in order to come out and attempt to effectuate some change here. And so I am, as part of this complaint, seeking uh, a complete um, accounting done of the trust account that is that I'm the executor and beneficiary of since 2013. And I'm asking that they post, settle, and close the accounts as should properly be done by the trustees and to um, negate the charges, these commercial charges out completely. And my documents, uh, my law documents have been incorporated into this complaint. And even when they're faced with defaults and dishonors, they don't care. Uh, they continue moving forward. They've ignored it all as they're ignoring us now. So we are now looking towards the militias and the persons of America now for assistance in this matter because they are completely silent on all things. Uh, we have given them first and second notice of default and dishonor in commerce, admiralty, equity, in law, at law, and otherwise. They've been given notice of silence as acquiescence. They've been given notice of unclean hands. And at this point, uh, their default and dishonor can no longer be cured. Uh, we will be filing a few more papers probably sometime next week, but we're going to keep that under wraps until they're filed, and they will be posted. Uh, anybody that wishes to contact us, there is, uh, what is it, hudoc at hudoc.com? Uh, Hudo yeah. Hudo hudoc at hudoc.com. For anyone interested in assisting us here, um, we had a huge following out at the Bundy Ranch. He lost a court case. Uh, here we are, we've got the entire state in default, and no one is coming to assist us. Um, once again, we're not seeking any money out of this case. We're, we're seeking return. Hey guys, as mentioned in the uh, video there, uh, whodoc.info, uh, we just, uh, I wanted to show you guys some of the additional filings that have taken place. Um, they're all right here. Alabama, Arizona, Florida. Texas uh, people are getting inspired to take back their land and take back their you know uh, the rightful framework as it, as it was described um, as the original framers had intended now uh, just take a quick look at these first amendment petition for a redress of grievances and breach of contract That was Alabama, Arizona. There's quite a few here. Uh, we have basically a, a similar document here, which is a PDF, uh, an expatriation repatriate, rep, sorry, repatriation uh, document, uh, declaration of absolute independence and pure freedom. Let's 
see. Oops. And return back. Florida. Let's see here. There we go. First Amendment, Amendment petition for a redress of grievances and breach of contract. And last but not least, Texas. Petition signed. There we go. This is what it takes, guys. And I mean, you know, as more people uh, start to jump on board, this isn't just an American problem. This is also a Canadian problem. It's a worldwide problem. It's a European problem. Europe is being hammered right now um, with uh, all kinds of issues. They are definitely uh, leading up to to hosing it into a, a, a one world, a one sorry, a one nation continent. Just about like they're trying to smash it all together. Um, the way it's looking, uh, they could easily uh, succeed. Like you guys have to like basically take this uh, to your state or provincial levels. Uh, it's an absolute mess. <laughs> but you know, this isn't really a call to arms, people. This is more like a call to get off your asses. You know, start making phone calls, start signing, uh, start writing and uh, filing these petitions yourselves. Uh, you know. I don't know what more it's going what more it will take uh before people start to get actively involved. I mean, even if you just like share this video, make a new video, uh get the word out to other people who have, you know, um, you know, any political power whatsoever to, and and get get these things, you know, filed. Um I don't know what else to say. Anyhow, um I'm going to go back uh to uh, my editing software here and I'm just going to render this video out from this point. You guys can watch the rest of the uh, video of uh, Tom uh, Deacon and you know uh, I'll, I'll provide all kinds of links for you guys uh, that way you can continue uh, more research, follow this and pass the word on to everybody. Uh, the time is now guys the time is now you know I know a lot of people have been talking about fear porn and this and that well guys this isn't a fucking uh, this isn't we don't need cowboys here uh, we need level-headed thinkers we need people like we need boots on the ground just about everywhere right now to help enforce the uh, the issue of grievances and breach of contract like we can't just you know we can't survive alone with just phone calls and emails. Now it's time to get, you know get off your ass and start filing. Start standing shoulder to shoulder with with, with your common man and woman. <laughs> but the point is, is uh, we're not going to do nothing sitting on our asses, guys. So um, I'll be following this as it develops, and uh, more videos will come, and I'll probably hold a few more podcasts uh, as uh, as the week progresses. And uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. And for God's sake, take care of each other. Peace. Out of this case, we're, we're seeking return to a lawful form of government. And this would be setting a precedent in this country if it could be done. But the three of us cannot do it alone. Uh, we need people from each state, all states, uh, across the world. We're all the same. We're all real men with hands and legs, and I'm sure in every country, similar liens have been filed. So now we'll go next into, it looks like, number four. Mm -hmm. And this is a credit safe report on the corporate state of West Virginia uh, with the official website of uh, legis.state.wb.us, which if you go to it, you will see that this is, uh, this is West Virginia. This is there. Um, and it's described as executive offices, even though it incorporates uh, the legislature and the judicial as well. So that's kind of odd. Um, and and as, on this document, you will see the different corporations that are set up, including the credit limits, which is very surprising that the state of West Virginia only has a $21,800 credit limit. It's not a whole lot. 
Um, sounds like they're not paying their bills. But you see quite clearly that uh, all the departments here um, are corporations. The Senate is a corporation. House of Delegates, corporation. Legislative branch, corporation. This is, um, this is ridiculous. This is not authorized by any contract that gives them the authority. The, the contract they're operating under allows them to operate in a de jure capacity by, of, and for the people. And so because it is by, of, and for the people, it cannot be a fiction of law. And yet this is what's ruling us. Okay, so we'll go to the next one, Phil. And this is the Dun & Bradstreet report. And once again, we'll see where they're registered. We have the West Virginia Legislature, uh, 105 Bradley Drive, Charleston, West Virginia. That's a private residence. I believe it's Stephen Harrison, is it not? Stephen Harrison, clerk, sure is. clerk of the House is, is, owns the legislature and is running it out of his home. Hello. Okay. We also have the legislative offices here. Uh, we've yes, got this is for many different things. We even have uh, state legislature John Blair, Dennis Mayle. I mean, what are these guys being incorporated as a branch of the legislature for? If you look on Manta, you will find this stuff. And Manta is free. You will find that it's the same in all the states. It's all the states are like this. Your counties are incorporated. Every bit of it. Uh, the Wood County that I live in, uh, their courts, uh, each judge has their own corporation. The clerk has her own corporation. The sheriff has his own corporation. You are being run every level down to the local level by corporations. And that is because of the bankruptcies, the many, many bankruptcies of this country. And each time the creditor was wanting the debtor to ensure that he could get and extract uh, the odious debt, the fraudulent debt uh, that has been uh, piled up upon us. And the easiest way to launder money is to set up corporations like this and that way the people never know that they're being uh, stolen from. Uh, this is a mafia style setup. They use the double book system from the mafia. Um, the CAFA reports show the true, the true assets of all of these. And in the last filing that we did, we, issued, we, we demanded subpoenas be, be issued uh, to the Treasury Secretary and the Secretary of State uh, we want to know all the CAFA reports of every corporation operating on the soil of West Virginia that in any way purport to be lawful government. Notice I said purport. They're not lawful government. They're not even government. They are private for profit subcontractor, supposedly providing government services, but uh, they are extracting vast amounts of revenue from us. Um, the average person probably pays in excess of 50% of their income in fees, registration, licenses, all of these things. And they all emanate from the Emergency Banking Act of 33. And that was the one that changed the 1917 Trading with the Enemy Act to include U.S. citizens. And so you, you are technically right now an enemy of the state. And so as an enemy, they can do what they're doing to us legally through their system. About about Dominion Post there. Well, Dominion Post. I mean, there are there are a lot of crazy things on this this Dun and Bradstreet report. Um, what page is that, Phil? Um, are we going down? We're quite down there, aren't we? Yeah, I've been I've been okay. I've yeah, been you're you're through. you're way ahead of me. Way ahead okay. of me. So what what we we go down a little farther. We've got the state of West Virginia governor's office, and of course, we found on Manta that he's operating two things. And of course, we know it's him because it's the governor.wv.gov website. And he claims that the governor's office is a legislative body now. So the state of West Virginia is an executive body, and the governor's office, which is an executive office, is a legislative body. Now, this is, uh, this is insanity. Um, we, we, we have allowed this to go on way too long, way too long. So we go farther down and we see officer name. Officer name, Earl Ray Tomlin. Well, that's our purported governor. So he is the officer running that company, the governor's office. Um, he's also running governor's mansion, Earl Ray Tomlin. 
Uh, we've got the state of West Virginia also being run by Jack Wiseman. So we've got uh, many, it's page four. Uh, we've got many different people, many different entities here. And then, and then we go down here and we see the Supreme Court of West Virginia. And the officer is Bob C. Wise. And you'll notice that all of these things so far have been registered to the state capitol building. So all of these corporations are running out of our building. And yet they're private corporations. So that's more evidence of the fraud being perpetrated at all times here. And so we, we, we go farther down, state of West Virginia, House of Delegates. Well, we've already got a Virginia West legislature now. We have a state of West Virginia House of Delegates. I mean, they have broken all of these things up into as many corporations as possible because then they can hide the income that they've extracted from us and they can launder it off to themselves and their banker friends. And uh, if you follow the money trail, you will follow it uh, through the county up to the state up to the federal level, and then you'll find it going through the Queen's coffers, and it's going to end up at the Vatican. And so the true principle of all of this is the Pope and the Vatican structure, the Holy See, whatever, they, whatever they're registered as now. Um, so let's keep going. So we've got executive office of the state of West Virginia. I mean, this is, this is unbelievable. To 13 pages, I think the original was over 20 pages of different corporations they've set up just at the state level. <clears throat> and it's probably not even a complete list at this time. That's why we've demanded by subpoena, we want all corporations operating on the soil of West Virginia. We want to see each and every incorporation. We want to see the books on each of those. We want to see all payouts from the Treasury. <clears throat> because if any of these persons have taken a payout and then we find them on a corporation that's purporting to be lawful government taking a payout, they're double dipping. It's more fraud. This is all evidence of fraud. And this is not even coming out of our mouths. It's not coming out of our mouths. Dunn and Bradstreet and Manta pick up their information from the Secretary of State offices. And so this is coming from the Secretary of State, this information. Because that's the only way they could get it. That's where the incorporation takes place in West Virginia. And so as we keep going down, we've got State of West Virginia Secretary of State, Aaron Goines. Um, you know, so... So now we have someone that's running it when in actuality it should be the actual person that we elected. And yet she's not running it. She's not running it. Someone else is running it. We've got a banking department. Well, what do they need a banking department for? We already have banks. Um, Attorney General uh, Frank Francis Hughes. Well, that's uh, Patrick Morrissey is the Attorney General, I thought. I'm, I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, this, this is getting ridiculous. Uh, we've got another legislative office, state of West Virginia, Thedford Shanklin. Well, how many legislatures do we have here? How many? I'm not sure. Uh, you know, this is, this is a Dominion Post. What, what is Dominion Post? What, is that a newspaper? That's a newspaper. Okay, Morgantown, why, yeah. Why is the Dominion Post registered at Canal Boulevard? That's, that's the state house. What, what is going on here? I mean, this, this is ridiculous here. Supreme Court of Appeals. Andrew Nunn. Well, I, I don't think Andrew Nunn is sitting on the Supreme Court. I'm, I don't believe so. So what, what's going on here? I mean, this, this is ridiculous, people. And if you think it's bad, check your state. <clears throat> check your state. Go to Manta. Manta is free. You'll, you'll, you'll be very surprised. Now we've got legislative services. Well, it's another legislative corporation. How many do you need? We don't have that many legislatures here. State Automobile Mutual Insurance Company. The officer is the Secretary of State. Why, why do we have an insurance company being run by the Secretary of State? Wait, there's another one. Union Security Insurance. I mean, West Virginia Secretary. What is going on here, people? I mean, take a look at your state. This is ridiculous. We've got another one. State Auto Property and Casualty Insurance being run out of the Capitol building. Secretary of State is the officer. Why is the Secretary of State in the insurance business? I'm not sure. They won't answer us, so I don't know. But we're trying to find out. We want the articles of incorporation here. We want to see what these things are actually doing, who the officers are, and we've demanded it by subpoena in a court. Um, so far, uh, they haven't responded, and they're in complete default and dishonor at this time. There's, there's nothing left. Um, they, they, they have no standing. They have no, they have no defense anymore. Um, we, we are coming at them with true law. 
Um, they've tried to manipulate the rules using 16 uh, GH and I to use a, a summary response so they didn't actually have to respond. But we took it as an answer. And their only defense was, we're the government. Well, uh, these Dun & Bradstreet reports prove they're not the government. Um, because th we didn't authorize insurance companies being run by the Secretary of State out of the Capitol building. We didn't authorize the governor to run two separate corporations while he's sitting in the governor's office. I mean, how much money is he making a year? We know what he makes on the public salary. How much is he making on the private? But purporting to be the governor. I mean, these are questions people need to start asking their own states. And forget your local level. Because if it's run like West Virginia, the state created your local levels. And so you're, you're going after the agents, not the principals. You need to be going after the principals. The principals is the state level. It's the state level. The legislature's incorporated the counties and the cities. So it's the state level. If you can fix the state level, the rest will fall in line. So stop with the county stuff. Stop with the city stuff. Go to the state level. And just look on Manta. The type in governor's office in your state. So you'd be surprised what you find very quickly. Now, of course, all of this stuff has been entered into the record of the court. Um, we've incorporated all of it within the complaint. Um, and, of course, this testimony is being restated and incorporated in its entirety in our documents right now. Um, we, are, we are on a battle here alone, just three of us here. Uh, they're obviously ignoring us. We need people right now at minimum give them a call pick up the phone dial 10 digits call the supreme court of appeals ask them why we're not be given uh, the opportunity to come in and have due process um, we've shown the harm we've shown their crimes by their own words uh, there is no reason that if they're not going to immediately issue the remedies demanded that we're not in court right now arguing with the defendants and being able to cross-examine them and to give our testimony on the record. This is our testimony on the record. We're not being allowed in. They are ignoring us. This is, this is our state. We pay the taxes. Every time you buy something in the state of West Virginia, you contribute to them. And so you have standing at that point. Even if you haven't been harmed, you've, you've contributed to it. I mean, they extract money from me, and I'm not even a citizen of West Virginia. I can't buy a candy bar without paying for my own demise. It's ridiculous. And so we're making a plea here for all persons. Remember the Bundy Ranch. He lost a federal court case. They were coming to seize his land and his property to pay off what was owed under a federal court case, and people came and defended him. Well, they're not trying to harm us other than stealing our money, our children, and our land. They're doing it to all of us here in West Virginia. They're doing it to all of you across this country, and yet no one's standing up. The militias, this Constitutional Sheriff's Association, so far, no one's standing up. What good is your Second Amendment right if you don't have a place to keep your gun? It's not going to do you any good on the street. It's not going to give you shelter. It's not going to give you food. So all of these associations saying Second Amendment rights, what about the rest? We have unlimited rights granted to us from the Almighty Author of all at birth. You can't actually give them away. They can be stolen under threat, duress, guns, violence, force, militarized police, but they're still yours. You're not the government. So a lot of people are telling you that you are the government. You're not the government. The government is your servant. So you could never be the government. So stop acting like you're judges. Um, stop acting like you're the government. You're not the government. You're the master. So act like the master. Uh, if the employee is doing something wrong at McDonald's, what do they do? They fire him. They get rid of him. And if he causes problems, what does the manager do? The manager uh, physically escorts him out. That's what it's time to do now. Uh, we've proven the case on the public record just to show the people, because it's the only thing they believe is what's in court. I mean, the people believe I'm a felon. I grew a plant. I grew a plant. I broke no laws. I'm allowed to grow any plant that's put here on earth. Genesis, check it out. It's there. 
anything that's put here I'm allowed to use. So I've, I've broken no law, yet because a court said I did, people believe it. And so that is why we filed into the court. We've shown and proven the illegitimacy of the court system here in West Virginia. And we would love to have the people join us because you don't have states anymore. What you have is a United States Inc. with fraud being perpetrated, making you think you have a state. So we are all in the same boat. There is no jurisdictional boundaries here. So if you live in the purported California, you can come and assist us here. And we can come and assist you there. It doesn't matter. There are no borders within this country. It's all one entity at this point. So don't let them say, well, that's another state. That doesn't affect me. It does. It does affect you. It affects us all. And it's not about the adults anymore because the adults should have taken care of this years ago. In 33, when, when we were declared enemies, the men, the real men with hands and legs at that time, should have strung these traitors up from lampposts. We've inherited this problem from our forefathers here. But I'm not going to allow it to be passed on to my children or your children. And so the three of us here, we need help. We need the assistance. We've proven it. Um, citizens' arrests can be made now. Multiple felonies. The felonies committed against me alone are enough for death. Felony kidnapping with a weapon is death. This is serious stuff. This is, this is not lightweight stuff that they're doing. And they're doing it to millions of people a year for crimes that are not crimes. They're imaginary. It's because they're failing to do the accounting. And they're trying to get you to do the accounting. And when you try to do it, they won't honor it. So you're in a catch-22. It doesn't matter. And it's just designed to loot your Seska B. Trust, which is your blood, sweat, and equity. It's yours. It was granted to you at birth. And so this can be changed. But people sitting around behind a computer screen, making conference calls, talking about what we can do is not going to work. You stood up for Bundy. Well, let's stand up now in West Virginia. The domino effect from that would be amazing. We also have the law of necessity invoked in West Virginia now. If we can find the enforcement, we will invoke courts of record here. And we will begin to save the people, our fellow brothers and sisters. Uh, we will stop the kidnapping of our children for profit. We will stop the people from going to jail for profit, for things that are not crimes. There's probably less than a half a million people in this nation that need to be in jail. And technically they need to be given another trial simply because they did not get due process. But the majority of people in jail are there for things that are not crimes. They're not crimes under the common law. There must be an injured party. A fiction of law creature of mind cannot be injured by a real man with hands and legs. It just can't happen. Uh, early case law in this country clearly said that government cannot interface with us. And hence, that's why they've created these straw men, these Seska B. Trusts, these corporates uh, names, these war names. Uh, because that's the only way they can interface with us. So look at your bills. Look at your license. It's all caps. They're not talking to you. But it's time to stop this. This is, this is out of hand at this point. And what is coming down the pike with the technology, if you thought it was bad now, it's, you, it's a nightmare that's coming. And you haven't thwarted their plans with your little patriot movements. You're not stopping them. They're moving forward. You haven't altered it one bit. They're still moving forward. The Pope is coming here in September. He's going to the UN and Congress. He's going to be implementing a new world constitution, a world government, a world court. And this is more of the fiction. And if you think he's doing it for your benefit, well, I'm sorry to tell you, he's not your friend. He claimed your soul as early as 1302 documented. He's continued to do it every couple hundred years. He claims ownership by a 1213 treaty to all the land. Um, and to think that he can claim your soul in and of itself, this man deserves to be in a mental institution. Okay? I mean, it's that simple. And yet he's running around 
uh, with million billion dollar budgets um, and we're allowing it and people are welcoming him uh, these criminals should not be welcome they should not be welcomed. Um, the criminals the mafia of the past were not welcomed and yet we're welcoming the new mafia that's here uh, these are the new red coats the only difference is they're wearing business suits now people they've been here they've never left the red coats are still here we're paying a tribute every day to the queen and to the pope so it's time to stop this insanity uh, in the internet age here information can travel very quickly so get this information out get them to hudoc.info get them to read a few things because if not uh, all of us are going to end up executed their plans are under 500 million and I've heard estimates of under 200 million and we have over 7 billion now so they plan on killing 7 billion of us and if you think they're not think again because they kill millions of kids every week by starvation there's no reason for starvation in this world. There's none at all. There's plenty of food. There's plenty of land for everyone. Uh, the earth can support probably triple the population with no problem. And so th this is basically they've, they've undergone eugenics here and dysgenics here in America through the food, through the chemtrails. Uh, this is all reality. It doesn't matter that the mainstream media does not pick it up. It is reality. They are slow killing us at this point, and soon it will be the fast kill. Uh, they will just be executing you as they do our kids on the side of the road every day. I mean, we're standing by watching our kids be slaughtered, and we're not doing anything. I haven't found too many real men in this country yet. Everyone talks a good game, but they're not doing anything. So we've set the lawful basis for all the people in this country. <clears throat> with this complaint here to invoke courts of record and so there's no reason that it can't be done forget the grand jury the grand jury is for fictions it is a supervisory panel to investigate government and to issue indictments against government there is no reason for a grand jury when real men with hands and legs are involved a real man walks into court with a complaint he doesn't need permission of 24 people to say he's been harmed. That's not how it works. It's not how it works. So stop with the grand jury stuff. Stop with the I'm a judge stuff. Uh, you're you're going to get people in a lot of trouble. And most of these groups, when you get in trouble, they will abandon you. They're not coming to help you. And so uh, set up these courts of record by lawful contract. We, we have the contract posted on hudoc.info. It can be altered to suit you and your uh, co-signatories needs. Um, just remember that it, everyone's going to sign it, so you can't make it beneficial to just you. It's, it's got to be something that's agreed upon. It's very simple, page and a half. You have the authority now under the law of necessity. You've had it before, but we've given you documented lawful authority now, so there's no reason not to implement them. There's no reason for the malicious not to be enforcing them immediately. Uh, stop drinking beer and shooting the beer cans on weekends, fellas. You know, the game's over. Time's up. It's coming this year. If there's not something in place, it's going to be a military dictatorship. And we're already under the military rule of law. Now we're going to go to martial law. And that's when the hard kill comes in. And that's when you see the, the troops running through the streets. And that's when you see the Humvees parked at intersections, demanding papers. Um... Adolf Hitler would have dreamed of the technology they have and are using right now against us. I mean, it, this is he couldn't even imagine this. Uh, this is worse than Nazi Germany at this point. And they followed the template quite well from the early 30s. It's, it's a beautiful thing. These guys are not smart. They keep following the same plan. So if anybody had ever read history, they would already know what's happening and what's going to happen. Uh, they're going to start marking us. We'll be marked. I mean, uh, there's red dots. There's yellow dots. They're already marking us for execution and who can be re-educated. These camps popping up all over the place are not for nothing. They're not for nothing. The government doesn't spend money like that to build these things and not use them. They're going to be used. It may be soon. maybe later. But can you take that chance? I don't think you can. 
So the final document I have here, Phil, is the Definitive Treaty of Peace, September 3rd, 1783. And so now that I've told you that uh, you need to form general societies through a court of record and start a lawful foundation for a government, I can go ahead and destroy your constitutional dreams now. Um, in this, in the first paragraph, it says, It having pleased the divine providence to dispose the hearts of the most serene and most potent, Prince George III, by the grace of God, King of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, Defender of the Faith, Duke of Brunswick and Lundberg, Arch Treasurer and Prince Elector of the Holy Roman Empire and of the United States of America. And so your constitution does not exist from the beginning. It was a fraud perpetrated on you so that the bankers could extract the supposed war debts from the Revolutionary War. They're odious debts, they're fraudulent. They didn't give us anything of substance, and yet they demanded substance back. Now, the signatories to this, on behalf of the people of America here, were John Adams, Ben Franklin, and John Jay. And these were plenipotentiary, done at Paris, and they're self-proclaimed esquires. Now, esquire is a title of nobility granted by the king or queen of England. And a title of nobility, in order to have it bestowed upon you, you must pledge loyalty and fealty and homage to that person. So if they're signing as an esquire, that means they committed treason from the very beginning. Half the signers of the declaration were, were esquires. Okay, this is how he came back in and got us back. We won the Revolutionary War, absolutely. And we gave it right back with the peace treaty. Gave it right back. And so you, you've never had a constitutional government. You've never had a court in America. They're all administrative for extracting the revenue. And present day, they're military tribunals. And your police forces are military police forces. They're not police anymore. They're not the sheriffs. None of them are talking about constitutional sheriffs. There is no such thing right now in America. You have military police. It's exactly what they are. So let's stop fooling ourselves. A duck is a duck, a goose is a goose. We are under martial rule. It's just that simple. Martial law that's coming is not going to be pretty. So those of you that believe you're in the Patriot Movement, you're the first ones on the list to be executed. So if you don't start taking some real action now, uh, go ahead and uh, make burial plans. Get your will ready, because they're coming for you. Don't fool yourself. They're coming for you. You've already made the list. Every call, every website you visited, they know who you are. They're coming for you. They're coming for me. I don't know. They may leave, they leave, they, they may leave Phil and Gene alone. I'm not sure. But they're coming for me. They're coming for the rest of you. So let's stop this. Um, we are pleading everyone at minimum, call the Supreme Court of Appeals directly. Call the judges. Ask them why the decision is not being handed down. According to their trial court rules, they had 30 days to enter judgment from the time of the filing. Well, we filed on May 24th, 22nd. One of the two. 24th. Okay. Uh, we're, we're looking at now two months. Two months now. So they're a month past due already for judgment. They gave they gave the defendants 30 days to answer. Well, that's not according to trial court rules. They violated their own rules. And so technically, that means they violated their oaths, which means technically, according to their own case law, that they have committed treason. All of these people have. When you war with the Constitution, which is the original employment contract, you have committed treason. And so now is the time to stop it. We can be contacted. Our information is on the complaint. Call any of us. Let's do something. Let's work together. Remember, there are no states. They're just subdivisions of the federal government. So let's stop with the jurisdiction. I live in Colorado. I live in California. Boo-hoo. No. You live in U.S. Inc. 
That's reality. So snap out of it. We're all real men with hands and legs here on earth. I mean, there actually are no countries. It doesn't matter. We're all real men. And so we should be helping each other. So those in the surrounding states, if you're near us, you're not a far drive. Hop in your car. Let's get this done. Coordinate with us. We'll assist you. We'll go with you. We're not scared to do it, but three of us, uh, they'll execute us on site. We can't do anything about it alone. Uh, we need a as big a turnout as Bundy Ranch. And if I don't see it, I'm done with the law game. Y'all can have what's coming. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my life what, what few days we may have left. I'm going to spend some time with family and friends. So this is my last offer to help and assist the people of America here. Um, you better take it. You better take it because it's not going to come again. I mean, we've got months at most before things start happening. And once it starts happening, it will be a snowball effect and there will be no coming back. There will be no coming back. And you do not want a military dictatorship. And it's coming. It's coming. So with that, Phil, is there anything I've left out? I've tried to cover it as clearly and succinctly as I can. Yes, we're, we're not doing this for, our, for our health. No, no. I mean, I could use some sleep, so this is definitely not benefiting me at all in any manner, shape, or form. Yeah. Um, you know, now, now is the time. We've got them in default and dishonor. At law, that is deadly. It's over. It's done. It doesn't matter if they come back with anything now. It doesn't matter. They were given two opportunities, one more than is necessary. So we're just pleading for action now. We're not hard to find. We're not hard to find. The website gives an email address. The complaint gives our phone numbers and addresses. I mean, we're not hard to find here. So reach out to us. We'll, co we'll coordinate. We mm -hmm. just need groups of people. It doesn't matter. Technically, a militia is all able-bodied persons between 18 and 49. Okay? So you don't have to say you're in a militia to do anything. That's right. It's time, <clears throat> it's time to effectuate citizens' arrests. We don't need warrants. We don't need writs. We don't need anything. We are the authority. That's it. So with that, please, look into the court of record. Uh, forget the grand juries. You need courts at this point. You need courts, uh, and we need action. We need action now. Stop with the email. Stop with the phone calls. It's not doing anything. They're laughing at you. They're laughing at you. It's not doing anything. Okay. Use the phone to coordinate the action. Use the email to coordinate the action. But don't sit there behind the keyboard and think you're doing anything. It's not working. It hasn't worked for many years now. Okay, So stop fooling yourself, people. This is serious now. So we're here. We're waiting for all offers. We would like to see thousands of people here. I would like to see it by the end of the weekend. It may not be plausible, but let's get this done. You know, this would be a precedent set and would shake the foundation of their corporations. They would be terrified to see the principles removed from power here. Terrified. And of course, you can go back to the Constitution. Go ahead, you're going to lose it all. But you can set that Constitution back up and force them to honor it for a limited time. That would be better than nothing at this point. Starting over would be tough. But you need to look to the future. If you can take control of it now, you need to set up a proper foundation for the future generations. Because otherwise, with the technology, uh, it, it wouldn't be five years before t it's taken back over. So we can use the Constitution temporarily as a bridge. Uh, you could use a public trust as a bridge, but it's not a permanent solution. So stop fooling yourself with that. We need to start really thinking, people. Just turn off the TVs. Turn off the computer. Think. Use your brain. It's what it's there for. It's not to hold up your skull. Trust me. Enough of you do that already. We're so, all going to have to give an account for yeah. what we did and what we didn't do. Absolutely. You know, the final judge is not going to look highly upon a lot of you. You know, we, we've, we've got a clear conscience here. If we had time to sleep, I'm sure we could sleep well. We don't have time to sleep yet. But my conscience is clear. I've done everything I can as an individual man. Um, I need other men to stand with me. And if not, then it's over. 
it's not, it's over. So if you're not going to do anything, go ahead and make your will out. Go ahead and make your will out. They'll provide you a plastic casket. You don't need to worry about that. But make your will out, and maybe your children uh, you know, will get a percent of it or something. Maybe. If you're lucky. If they make it that long. So with that, the, the contact information is there. It's everywhere. Find us. We'll work with anyone at this point. With that, I'll defer to you. I have nothing else to say at this point. Let's uh, let's pray that the Lord lead us, lead everyone that's listening, and that we are each convicted into what is our duty under the Creator, and we give Him the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Yeah. Do what you're told, when you're told.